everybody. Uh, happy holidays and welcome back to Kitchen Witchin, coming to you from the ugliest kitchen in America. I'm your host, Susie Bianco. Thanks for joining me again today uh, for this one last episode of 2023. Um, I have been sort of uh, out of the, um, taking a bit of a sabbatical, we'll say that, from the show and from my jobs for varying periods of time for the last month and a half because I had gallbladder surgery at the beginning of November. And, well, I had it removed. I don't, they, they didn't, like, do anything to it. They just pulled it out of me. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to keep it. I asked the surgeon very nicely because I had plans to, you know, put it in a little jar with googly eyes on it and make a talk during the show. But they had to send it to the lab, you know, to make sure I wasn't dying of something horrible. I'm okay. <laughs> the surgeon at least got a kick out of it. So, hey. That was, that was some. So anyway, here I am, completely gallless, <laughs> for the last episode of the year. We're coming up on a year pretty soon, in like about another four or five weeks. We're going to be doing this show for a year, even though I took off like three months in total, I think. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention that, and then it popped out. Oh, and I'd also like to apologize for this mess. Because I woke up today, like, this is not a perm, that I don't have product in this. I woke up today and my hair decided it was 1987. Like, I asked God to play bass like Noel Redding, and he gave me his hair instead. God is dead. Nietzsche was right. Anyway, on to the show. <laughs> today, we're going to make something that is just the best part of Christmas, in my opinion. I don't even like Christmas. I kind of hate it. I don't celebrate it, personally. I'm more of a Yule fan. Um, not not a fan of Christmas. Never really have been. My, my grandmother's birthday was last Tuesday, so she was born right before Christmas. She loved Christmas. And she, you know, was pretty much the reason why, when it got to the big day, I pretty much enjoyed it because she went all out and she made everybody love Christmas as much as she did. And after she passed a few years ago, well, uh, not only did my curmudgeonliness about Christmas come back, but also because I had a huge amount of grief, I just, I just couldn't do it anymore. It really sucked. So, boy, this is a downer of an episode. So today we're going to make pizzelles. This is something that we've had in my house every Christmas for as long as I can remember, even before I was born. Um, my grandmother would make, like literally, I have a picture of her recipe, it makes a gross of pizzelles. That's 12 dozen, 144 cookies. <laughs> she had like 10 cake boxes full of pizzelles in the house all, all December long. It was awesome. It was just like raining cookies in my house. It was the best. So, for this, before we get started, you're gonna have to, you're gonna need a Pizzell oven. Now, I can't imagine if you don't have a Pizzell oven and you don't want to buy one, because in the words of my, um, my, the true, the one true prophet of the kitchen, of the Food Network, <laughs> Alton Brown, it's a unitasker. We don't like the unitaskers in here. Plus, you know, you see my kitchen, I don't have a lot of storage. I ain't got room for this stuff. But, this is one of the very few taskers I keep in the house. It's beautiful. Great. Oh, I just pulled the plug. I'll fix that later. <laughs> it's okay. It does <laughs> In order to be clean, you can kind of take it apart. I, I hope. Anyway, so you're going to need a Pizzell oven if you want to make them in the proper shape. Although, to be honest, you could probably just stick a dollop of it on a cookie sheet, stick it in the oven for a while. And just have, like, non-waffled Pizzell cookies? I'm going to have to try that sometime. Hmm. Anyway, so what you're going to need is three and a half to four cups, cups of flour. And I'll explain that when we get there. Two and a quarter cups of sugar. Two sticks of butter. Needs to be melted, unsalted butter. And then cool down to room temperature. And a half dozen eggs warmed up to room temperature. Uh, we also need half teaspoon of salt, two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder. Yes, 
the same as the sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, and uh, one to one and a half tablespoons of anise oil, depending on how spicy you like your cookies. And then, optional, a half teaspoon of anise seeds. Now, hopefully, my regulars, if I have any, <laughs> uh, uh, will remember anise seeds from making biscotti at the beginning of the year. And, you know, mm, smells good. So if you, you don't have to add these to your pizzelles, but you can if you want. The way my grandmother would make them was she would put in her anise oil and this stuff, woof, this will smell up the whole house. Amazing. And then she would put in about a half teaspoon of, that that's where I got that from, from her recipe, of anise seeds along with it. So what I've done is taken a half teaspoon of anise seeds and uh, put them in my mortar and pestle and sort of chopped them up, uh, ground them up a little bit, broke them down a little bit. So you're not going to have just like a whole anise seed in the middle of your cookie. Um, and that's optional. Like I said, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Normally what I do is I just use the anise oil. And you can use anise extract if you want to, but you're going to need about three times the amount. And maybe a little bit less uh, in the sugar or the butter. Just take a couple of tablespoons out before you put it in so you don't, you know, have it too liquidy or too dry. Of course, with our varying flour amounts, that's not going to be an issue. We can work around that, you know. And like I said, we'll get to that when we get started. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. What you want to do is take your half dozen eggs, which hopefully have been warmed up to room temperature, crack them in a bowl, and oh, by the magic of the cooking show, woo! Yeah, I cracked them. You missed it, and one of the takes is not on here <laughs> that I edited out. I accidentally launched an egg onto the floor. It's still there. Yeah. Anyways, so we're going to take a fork and just beat these up very gently. You don't want to overbeat them. I like to kind of scab into the yolks. using a fork so it's not as uh, excessive as a whisk. Okay. Alright, then we have our two and a half cups of sugar. We're going to go ahead and add those in. those slowly. Just combine, we don't want to beat it too much. We're not creaming the sugar here. We're not going to wait until it totally breaks down. So, uh, in the meantime, we're going to put in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. We're going to go ahead and put in our tablespoon or half tablespoon of anise oil. This stuff is strong. And it, don't put it in the fridge because it'll get clumpy. And you can just leave it in your cabinet with your other oils, and it'll last for a really long time. Like, the sell-by date on this is next year, but you could probably still use it for like a year. And, you know, as long as it doesn't go rancid. melted butter that is uh, mostly room temperature. It's a little warm, but 
you need to get down to room temperature so you don't uh, cook the eggs. As I'm hopeful, as hopefully as you were noticing, I'm doing this by hand, and I'm trying to do it very gently. Making fazelles is not a race; it's a marathon. You'll realize that when we start to cook them in our fazelle in our fazelle iron, uh, because it takes a long time. This recipe is probably like. 50 to 60 fazelles, and you can only do two at a time. Yeah. So this is definitely a recipe where you <laughs> want to, you know, just take your time and set aside a whole block of time in the afternoon. Or late morning. I don't know. Now, in my grandmother's and mm, subsequently my sister's version of this recipe, uh, you can also put in a little bit of lemon extract in this. I think that it goes nicely with the anise oil because it kind of gives it a little bit of a brightness. But I don't feel the need to do that. I think it's good as it is. I, I like it a little bit uh, on the sweeter side and less on the um, bright, sharp side, I guess, if that makes sense. I hope you can see that. And get that all nice and mixed in there. Okay, now we can go ahead and start on our dry ingredients. Okay. Now we have our three and a half to four cups of flour in here. So we're going to take our first, our first cup, and this is important, take our two, well, We'll get that in a second. We're going to put our half a teaspoon of salt right on top and take about half of our baking powder on top and very carefully kind of put it all in together. You want to gradually add the baking powder, like I usually just do it in two batches, with the flour. And again, mix very gently by hand. As always, I always say make sure you scrape the sides of the bowl, and that's important with this because we've got a very heavy butter egg mixture in here with a lot of sugar, so you're going to want to make sure that you sort of force it in there. <laughs> All right, so that's one cup. I always forget. Sometimes I like write it down on a piece of paper. <laughs> Actually, it, with this, it doesn't matter too much because we are going to add flour until we get the consistency that we like. It's not a matter of, you know, we need to add this much flour at this time. It's it's probably going to, it's more like, you know, it's probably going to be between these two amounts, but, you know, don't just stick it all in at once. See how it ends up? Because um, I gotta tell you, this is a little bit. Uh, the, the real difficulty of pizzelles lie in the uh, the batter, the basically the, um, the density of the batter, I should say, uh, because um, you don't want it too thick, or it'll get cakey in the iron, and you don't want it too thin, or it'll 
run off and have holes in it and just taste awful. <laughs> so it's going to take a little bit of planning and uh, a little bit, of, well, a little bit of practice rather, in order to kind of get the hand of you know where you want your the density of your batter to be. Okay, so cup number two and putting in the rest of our baking powder at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and slowly add that in. You can see it already getting nice and thick here. You're going to want to stop, but keep going. <laughs> Just trust me. I mean, you've trusted me this far, right? I don't know. I know last week's uh, <laughs> last week's Flor Magoria episode was uh, me talking about something my mom and I used to share together. This is definitely something that um, my sister and my grandmother, my paternal my paternal grandmother, my dad's mom. Uh, this is definitely something that I share with them. I enjoy it because this is the most uh, Nostalgic and feely I get most of the time, most of the year. <laughs> but uh, my grandmother, my nanny, which is uh, the anglicized word for nana, for uh, Italian grandmother, uh, was a really great, she was a good cook, she was a good baker. And we're going to explore more of her things on, on this show, especially when we get into uh, our bread episodes, which should be fun, which hopefully will be this year, maybe spring before it gets too warm. And she just always, it was always a joy for her to bake and cook, and she did it every day up until she was 90 years old. Um, and then my sister sort of took on the mantle of the matriarchal mantle in that family. My mother is now the matriarch of uh, her family since my grandmother, that grandmother, her mother passed away last summer. So I do come from two very heavily matriarchal families and it's awesome. Um, but then, you know, my the torch kind of got passed to my sister who was, well, she's, my sister Seth is eight years older than me. And has an engineering degree and tends to look, loves chemistry and has an engineering degree. So she and my grandmother, who my grandmother cooked by using pinches and things that weren't actually measurements. So, yeah, Steph, Steph hates trying to decipher her old recipes. Like, how much is a pinch? Ah! She's done a pretty good job with it, though. But I would have to say they are the three, the three most important, you know, women in my life. They're like, especially when it comes to cooking and my bizarre sense of humor and the fact that I'm insanely stubborn <laughs> and always entirely too determined. So, yeah, like I said, I'm getting sentimental and it doesn't happen much. I still don't like Christmas, but, you know, take it for what it is. <laughs> But yeah, so this recipe is sort of, uh, this episode is sort of in honor of my grandmother and my sister, who both, you know, went out of their way to teach me how to cook and always help me with it and always be encouraging me. And hell, my sister was my first piano teacher, in fact. I wanted to start playing when I was five. I did start playing when I was five. And no, the, the local music teacher wouldn't take me, so Steph decided that she was going to start teaching me on her own. So she's always been, you know, sort of a mother of sorts 
and especially, like I said in the last episode after my parents' divorce, she kind of became the mom of the family because my father is, um, what's the best way to describe him? Boomer man-child narcissist. And so he kind of was like, well, this is your job now, I don't care. So in a lot of ways, she did help raise me. Like I said, she's, you know, nearly a decade older than me. So, yeah. So, you know, sometimes it's nice to share these uh, stories behind why I make these things, which is usually because of my family. I have a lot of family. All right. Now we're getting to the point where we need to stop. Yeah, well, you like that segue now? Stop your family stuff. Oh, hey, pay attention to your flower. But no, seriously, pay attention to your flower. Because <laughs> it's getting pretty thick. I may have put slightly too much in. We'll see. If you put too much in, just add more anise. You know. <clears throat> now, anise is not like garlic. You can put too much in. Trust me. <laughs> But, if you want something kind of fun, take a little pot, some water, dump in some anise oil with some, maybe some cloves and some orange peel, or some cinnamon sticks. Make your whole house smell like a licorice farm, because that's definitely where they get licorice from. I don't know where my mind is at right now. <laughs> okay. pretty thick. You can see it's very globby. I'm not doing this to be weird. I mean, I am weird, but this has a purpose. Okay. Now, hopefully you can see how thick this is, how slow it's falling. This is pretty perfect for our needs. And if you put some on, on your finger, it doesn't run off. Getting pretty... Pr I, I think I want to put in just a little bit of flour. A little bit more just to give it a tiny bit more firmness so that whenever it goes on the heat, it doesn't just melt over. See, this is what I mean with, you know, you have to make it a bunch of times before you kind of can feel out, you know, oops, I've got stuff everywhere, you know, before you can kind of feel out, you know, where it needs to be. I noticed that was a little bit slower. You know what? I think that's just perfect. <laughs> so uh, when we, well, okay, let's see how much that was. Mm, that's about a three quarters of a cup. So we put in, I had about four cups in there. So, uh, about three and a quarter cups. So it's only three and a quarter. Maybe we should put in a little bit extra just to be on the safe side. Because it's supposed to be at least three and a half, but, you know, it's not always, depending on your butter and your egg sizes. Uh, you know, it's fine. be back in just a second. Let me get all this stuff cleaned up and get my Pizzell iron heating up and we'll be right back to start making the cookie. We're back. Our, our iron is nice and warm. Hopefully you can see the steam coming off of it. And for this, you're going to want to find somewhere comfortable to sit because we're going to be here for a while. So, oof. all right. I also forgot before we left, if you want to add your anise seeds, go ahead and do that now. Give it a quick stir in. If you don't, 
that's fine. I'm not going to put mine in. I tend not to because I have a lot of Venice flavor in there as it is. But that's just me, and you should, you know, follow your own drummer. Part of what the show is about. Okay. So this is very hot right now. What we have is tablespoon, pork, wet rag, just trust me, a little rack to put them down on to cool, uh, a big surface to put them on after they harden to just stack them up, and a little bit of olive oil and my basting brush. I like to put just a little bit of oil down, just a tiny bit. Just, I mean, this is not, you know, it hasn't really been used. It's not, uh, the grates are not scratched up or anything. So it's not necessarily something you would have to do every time. I just do it a little bit at the beginning, you know. Okay, and we are ready to get started. Now what you want to do is just take, this is going to be globby and messy and sticky and kind of a gross pain in the butt until we're done. But trust me, it's worth it. It is so worth it. So whoop, let's swing this around <laughs> so you can see. I'm totally going to burn myself. Oh my God. All right. Take a spoonful and I like to put it sort of in the back half here. And that's sort of just like uh, one, one and a half inches. You can take your lid, and I like to kind of push it down slowly, but then to squeeze the hell out of it, and it will come out everywhere. And you will make a mess, and that's okay. But you have to remember, it's been a year since I've done this. I'm a little rusty myself. <laughs> Maybe not put quite so much in next time. Open it up. Well, yeah, it looks good. <laughs> now we can go ahead and close it. And that's going to cook for 30 seconds to a minute. I don't know if there's going to be music over this. It's just... Yep, it needed more flour. Hold on one second. I'm going to put a little bit more flour in, and then we're going to keep going, because those are just too thin. but even when you've done this for a long time, you can still screw up and make the dough thin because it's a pain in the butt. It really is. But again, very worth it. So, honestly, you know, hell, leave these out. They're still good to eat. They're just not pretty. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff <laughs> everywhere. Just, you know, warning. Like I said, I like to put it a little bit back, not directly in the middle, sort of a little bit in the back half. Slowly lay down so it can just kind of smush everything into it forward. And then grab it real tight. Ugh. Watch the steam. In fact, you should probably be wearing something like this. <laughs> but I'm not because I'm dumb. 
And you know, there's going to be stuff coming out around the edges, that's fine. Uh, sometimes I like to pull it up and look at it. It's pretty close. So, I can never quite get it down the whole way. I don't know why. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and notch that shut. Wipe our hands down with the wet towel, which, yes, is why it's there. <laughs> Trust me, you're going to need it. Like I said, it's very goopy. And let it go for a little bit. You want know, to kind of scrape the stuff off the sides. Should probably have a timer. Nope, a little bit more time. how nice and hard that is. To be honest, mine are never pretty. <laughs> Alright, that's not too bad. Now as you can see, they're kind of nice and golden brown there. And this is why we have the fork to pull it off. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> I told you I was going to burn myself. <laughs> okay, let's just try that again. wipe your hands off. <laughs> I mean, I've tried making this with, um, you know, cookie dough scoops. It doesn't really help much. <laughs> I tried it with other spoons. Honestly, the fastest way is to stick your fingers in it and push it off the spoon. I wish I could tell you that wasn't the only way, but it's the most efficient way that I've found so far. <laughs> Unless it's, I invent some kind of a potato gun specifically designed to shoot one inch balls of very gooey batter. But I don't think physics is on my side for that one. Nah, who's, who am I kidding? I'd still try it. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and take a look. Yep, yeah, that looks good. They're about halfway cooked there. So leave them for a few more minutes. And since these have nice and hardened up, sometimes what I like to do is take off this little lattice around and I snack on it later. Because <laughs> it's still tasty, it's just thin, it's like a, like a cracker. Okay. And like I said, they aren't usually pretty, but they're very good. Yeah, you can tell this one definitely got overcooked because it's breaking apart like real, real easy. And they do that sometimes. All right. There we go. Now these are a little too dark, in my opinion. I like them a little bit lighter than that. But my fiance and I were talking about this episode, and we kind of came up with something, a cool idea. If you want... You can make these in the summer. Ow. And I need a better example. <laughs> hmm. Better example. Take one of your 
hot pizzelles while it's still hot. Push it over. Whoop, this one's a little bit dry, so it started to flake out on me a little bit. Push it over um, something round and make yourself a little ice cream bowl for some eggnog ice cream. And hopefully when I do these, it'll be a better visual because I did not really... <laughs> that was a bit of a mess! Wipe your fingers off because they're gross and sticky. <laughs> or lick them off. I do that sometimes, but you know, I'm on camera, so I don't want to be gross. <laughs> you know, I usually do this in the living room and I like just watch TV while I'm doing it. <laughs> this takes like an hour. <laughs> and this is like half the amount that my grandmother and my sister make. So, yeah. Okay. Now, as you can see, hopefully, I didn't push this down the whole way, so it's a little bit thicker in there, which is fine. indented a little bit better. Hmm. I did mention <laughs> my mortar and pestle. I did this right before the show went on. I bet this will be a good form for it. I'm determined to make this work now because I mentioned it. <laughs> I have to be like, look, look how cool this is. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Now, like I said, I don't like them this dark. You know, the sugar gets a little um, bit of a, not burnt taste, but it has a bit of a darker, heavier taste to it, and I don't really like that as much. But that's just me. If you like it, go for it. All right. Now that looks pretty good. I'm just going to kind of slice that up. one off and stick it on here. And let's pull this one off and stick it in here and see how it works. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! I'm a genius. Although my fiance was the one that came up with the uh, the eggnog icing going with it, so he's a genius too. Okay, there we go. Yeah, just like we practice. Oh, that is that is a lot of batter. That's going to go everywhere. <laughs> Let me grab some of that off. It kind of worked. Okay, slow down. And squeeze. Ah! Dude, yeah, on camera, can't act like a crazy person. I'm not a lunatic. I don't wish to burn the house down. I like this house. I own it, so, you know. People always get weirded out when I make that face, especially when I'm holding power tools. I don't understand it. I'm a very, you know, careful, peaceable person who just horribly burned herself about 10 minutes ago. So, okay, I kind of get it. <laughs> All right. There we 
go. And what? Look at that. Let's see how this one went. might have to go to the store. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a fun little experiment, and it worked! Yay! It helped break up the monotony of cooking these things! <laughs> okay. I mean, they are kind of like pancakes. You know, you're going to mess up and overcook them sometimes, the first couple. That's fine. They're still good. Oh, they're getting a little bit brown over there. It always seems like one of these cooks faster than the other one does. I don't really understand that, but it's okay. But we're going to just leave it for a tiny bit longer. I need to pay for some music rights so I can put it on in the back. It's, oh my God, this is boring. <laughs> okay, nice and golden brown. You have to be careful because sometimes these little, they're not really hinges, there's a little pin that goes in. And sometimes if you lift them up the wrong way, it'll kind of pop out. I don't know how my grandmother did them. They were always so pretty. Mine just looked like that. I don't get it. <laughs> now, if you notice, this stuff is starting to stick. You can put a little bit more oil on as you're going through. I have noticed that I don't have to do it very much, maybe once or twice while I'm while I'm cooking, because like I said, the uh, the Teflon in this is still in really good shape, so nothing really sticks. But if well, of course, if you notice the Teflon coming off, you're going to want to replace it because that's very dangerous. Or you'll be like me and just be like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> don't be like me in this instance. While the rest of these cook, I'm not going to make you sit here for an hour watching me do this because neither of us wants that. Come on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish these and we'll be back uh, after I'm done. <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit. Not a little bit. It's going to be a while. Oh my God. As you can see, <laughs> hopefully, we got a nice little stack of gazelles. Let's do this. I like to sometimes take these little lacy bits on the edges off, make them look slightly more presentable. <laughs> Plus, you know, put them on ice cream. Or just, you know, snack on them. They're still gazelles, they still taste good. myself again <laughs> while the camera was off, amazingly. And like I said, you're going to make a mess. As you can see, I have made a mess. Alright. Let's check on them. That's still a little light. Okay. 
But that's, I don't, I don't know, 40, 50, maybe? A lot of cookies. This is like a normal amount of cookies, I would think. You know, like as a kid walking into the Sun Porch and seeing like five boxes full of hundreds of pizzelles was amazing. But I wasn't the one that had to make them. So <laughs> that changes your perception a little bit. enough for one more lonely little cookie here. Maybe. It's going to be tiny. definitely made a gigantic mess <laughs> for the absolute best reason and like I said the wet towel comes in handy <laughs> most definitely <laughs> all right and to finish up oh these are still a little soft I don't want to take them off yet all right come on cook I want to finish this episode not that I don't love being here but I really want to finish this episode. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now we can go ahead and unplug this, let it cool, and give it a nice wipe down. Doesn't require a lot of maintenance. It's not too bad. And move it off to the side because I will burn myself on it again. It's just a given at this point. <laughs> Every year. Okay. That's not too bad there. Mm. I might like mine a little bit on the thin and crumbly side. Not too much because it'll sort of taste like a cracker. You might like yours a little bit thicker, and that's fine. You know, it just uh, is a matter of practicing it until you figure out what density you want your batter at and then going for it. <laughs> but it makes a very nice little stack, very pretty stack of desserts <laughs> that are light and crumbly and taste really good. Very nice. <laughs> So I think that is all for this holiday season for Kitchen Witchin and for 2023, our first year. For, you know, we mostly, we kind of made it a full year. Not really, no. I made it about, um, I guess, in total, like seven months <laughs> and took off a few. <laughs> Maybe eight, maybe maybe nine months, I don't know. but despite the fact that we have sort of a cookie tornado landing in our kitchen, uh, we have a nice little treat for home or to give out as gifts at the office. And nothing is better than homemade pizzelles. You can buy them at the store, but the texture is just off. They're kind of chewy. They're not made right. You got to make them at home to really get that nice crispy crunch to them. So I hope that you and yours have fun making these and any any of the other desserts or dinners that you've made on my show this, this uh, year. And I hope you have a great holiday season. And I'll see you next year. Um, <laughs> I mean, I hope, barring something horrible happening, I should be back in another two weeks for something. <laughs> But this has been Kitchen Witchin' and 2023 uh, coming to you from the Ugliest Kitchen in America. Thank you for joining me and happy cooking. We'll see you later. <laughs>